And Milo's got new treats today. So come on. Come on up. Oh. Why are you going up that way? <laughs> He's climbing up the back of the chair. So Milo, here's the deal. If you help me set some goals today for my finances, you can have a treat. You think you want to try that? You got a brand new... Oh, these smell good. If you look really cute and you display your, your new little bandana and you eat your treats and I get famous enough, maybe you can be sponsored by BarkBox. Okay, go, go eat. So he's got his treats. He's happy. Let's set some new financial goals. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Michael, and I've been taking you guys with me for a very long journey and soon to be over with journey of paying off close to $140,000 worth of student loan debt. Now, as I've been approaching the finish line, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty happy, feel successful, um, a healthy sense of pride in what I've accomplished and what I'm going to accomplish. And as I get close to the finish line, uh, something that has been on my mind, and also I've seen it listed down in the comments section below, is what are you gonna do next? At the time of filming this video, my outstanding remaining student loan debt is sitting at $4,842.31. So I'm getting really close to being done with my, my student loans, which feels great, don't get me wrong. But the purpose of this video is to kind of take things a step further. As I mentioned in my last few videos, something that's been on my mind is that I don't want to finish paying off this debt and then have nothing to do with my, my money, so to speak. I don't want to get into a place where having an extra $3,000 a month becomes kind of the norm for me and then I just start to spend it on all sorts of things that I don't need. Before we dive in and start talking about exactly what new goals I'm setting for myself financially post being debt free, I wanted to take this time as I, in my last video, asked you guys the question, what do you think on this channel the newer content should be because I'm not gonna have Transfer Tuesdays about paying off debt. I'll probably still have some form of Transfer Tuesday, but obviously there'll be no student loans to pay off. But the first comment I wanna highlight, this is from TVD Satan. Don't know if I'm saying that right. I guess this is gonna become a thing on this channel where people uh, put comments in and then I don't know how to say their, their channel name. But do some content about occupational therapy and find a way to put it in a financial, put an, a financial element into it so that it has something to do with your niche. And that's a great idea. That kind of like does a double niche because obviously finance is the niche of this channel, budgeting, investing, paying off debt. Obviously, if you guys have been here for any length of time, but the other side, which I hint at here and there, if you've ever heard me talk about my job, I'm an occupational therapist and I work with ages literally three to 103. I know it wouldn't probably appeal to everybody because not everybody watching this is an occupational therapist or even in a position to go off and become an occupational therapist, but um, maybe a, a video like that would appeal to somebody who's looking in the health field and looking to go to college and wondering, What's a good degree? Where, what should I get a degree in and then have a job in? Because that's a big concern for college kids, I'm, I'm guessing, is that you wanna be able to have that piece of paper that costs you money, but also be able to make money with that expensive piece of paper. So um, that is a great comment. Thank you, I'm not gonna to try to butcher your name again, but thank you so much for sending in that comment. I think it's a great one and something I should look into and potentially make a video about. So the next comment I wanna address, uh, this person left a, a lengthy comment, which is totally fine to do because I like reading comments, um, but I'm gonna be addressing the second half of the comment. Um, you guys can, if you want, read through the top half. They left some really great ideas on things to, uh, ideas for the channel, ideas for different videos, and some of the the stuff they mentioned is things I've done in the past, I just haven't done recently. But I'm gonna be addressing the second half of this. Uh, this was submitted by Kittle O, I think it's Kittle O9124. Once again, I apologize if that's not how you would pronounce that or say that. But in the second half of it, they said, lastly, if you feel comfortable, share your household budget and how you and your wife come up with the budgets, how to agree on your budgets. 
uh, mutual goals that you two share combined with guilt-free spending, or do you have like an allowance per partner? I think that would be an interesting thing to talk about. Um, my wife and I have kind of a different setup when it comes to our finances. Uh, that is definitely a topic that my wife and I have talked about um, at length at some times uh, regarding how we do our finances. I will say what we're doing right now seems to work for us. So before you get to whatever down in the comment section below, um, what we're doing with our finances seems to, to work for both of us. We don't have any fights or disagreements on it, but it would definitely be something that's kind of interesting to talk about on here. Um, I've hinted at it in the past in some of my budget videos, but thank you so much for putting in that comment and uh, it gives me something to, to talk about with you guys in the future. All right, so let's get back to the main purpose of the video, sharing with you guys my next three financial objectives or goals once I'm finished with that $4,800 left over in my federal student loans. Now, I'm gonna talk about these objectives or goals briefly and kind of vaguely. I'm pro probably gonna be making videos about each one in the future. All right, so let's talk about objective number one or goal number one that I'm gonna have post being debt-free from my student loans. That way I don't slide into lifestyle creep with the extra money that I'll have. Um, and a lot of people put this down in the comment section last week. So kudos to you guys, because I think this is a really good goal to have, not just for me, but for everybody. And that is to set up and contribute to sinking funds. Now, if you know anything about me or this channel, or you've watched previous budgeting videos that I've made, you might know that I actually already have sinking funds set up. I use Ally Savings Bank. I'm not sponsored by them, but I think they have a really great intuitive platform that at this point in time gives you a really good um, interest for your savings fund. Um, the last time I checked, I want to say it was like 4.1 or 4.2 or something like that, but it's, it's pretty ideal. It's a high interest online savings account. And it's nice because in that online platform, you can set up what they call buckets or what we would call if you were doing it in an envelope system, sinking funds, which is basically where you're just setting aside money for a specific goal or a specific expense later on. And that helps you so that once that expense comes time to be paid or due, you already have money set up and you don't have to then take it from your other savings account or try to budget it in. It's already been budgeted for ahead of time. So first goal, set up and contribute to sinking funds. My plan is to have a Christmas sinking fund, a car sinking fund, because my wife eventually will need a new car. Uh, a, uh, what's the other one? A vacation sinking fund. And then I'm not gonna talk about this too much right now in the video because it will take up the whole rest of the time but a rental investment sinking fund. Um, more to come on that in the future, but basically I plan to eventually get into rental um, investments. Anyway, moving on to my second goal, once I am debt free with my, I have my student loans paid off, that $4,800 paid off, my second goal, and this will be the first time ever that I'm setting this goal for myself, is to max out my Roth IRA. Now, I have contributed to a Roth IRA in the past, but due to how I feel about my student loan debt and wanting to get rid of it as soon as I can, I haven't maxed it out. I've kind of just done bare minimum towards it. My goal this year is to max it out because I should be done with my, my debt payoff by, well, soon. And um, yeah, my plan is to max it out, which I think this year is still 6,500. Correct me down in the comments if I'm wrong. It's either 6,500 or 7,000 for someone my age. So my goal is to contribute towards that. All right, moving on to my third financial goal. Once I am officially done with the remaining debt that I have with my student loans, which is so close, very close. I can't stress how close I am to that. I know it sounds, like I said, $4,800. And uh, because you guys don't have the inside look of when I get paid and my bank accounts, you don't know how quickly I can pay that off but I'm not gonna give away any spoilers. Third financial goal that I have post debt freedom is to, this one's kind of interesting, pay the normal amount on my mortgage. And I know when I say that, people are like, what? I wrote down in your comments, like you should focus on getting that paid off. And 
once again, I said at the beginning of this video, these goals aren't totally set in stone. I'm just gonna share with you guys my thought process and my opinion of it right now at this time. I have a mortgage. Uh, my outstanding debt on my mortgage, by the way, I wrote it down because I haven't looked at it in a while, is one thousand or sorry, $127,262.87. So that's how much I have outstanding on my mortgage. I bought my house in 2020. Interest rate, I believe, is either 2.9% or 3%. And I pay a little over, I think it's like $1,050, $51 a month gets withdrawn on the first of the month. So it would be nice to have not pay $1,051 a month. I get it. However, at an interest rate of, let's say, 3%, there are other forms of investing. There's another other places I can put extra money that could beat that 3%. That's how I think right now. I have some other uh, friends in the, I would consider them higher financial world than me, meaning they've been doing this a lot longer than I have, and they have more experience with this, um, have kind of shifted me towards investing more, investing my money rather than trying to pay extra on my mortgage. Uh, I kind of bought my house at a time when rates were really low and uh, I didn't plan that. I just, that's what happened. My plan right now, once I'm debt free from my student loans is not to go gung ho on my mortgage. It's simply to keep making the payments that are due. And I get it. Like you can say, well, 3% on that $127,000 is a lot of money. And I know I get that, but I just feel that time in the market is very important, meaning time and in investing. So I'm probably going to be focusing on that. And I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings because I know a lot of people in the comments for the last few weeks when I've been asking this question, a lot of people have mentioned the mortgage. And I get like this, this channel and my videos, they kind of fall into that debt-free journey, debt-free mind, you know, being debt-free and having that mindset. Um, and I get that. Uh, but right now, I'm kind of gearing more towards putting extra money towards investing, um, whether that's stock market or saving for rental income, which is something that I've always really been interested in, but never been in a place that I could pursue it until soon to be around the corner. So that's where I'm at with that decision. That's my opinion of it and thought process on it right now. I'm scared to say this, but if you feel you want to, you can share what your thoughts and opinions are in the comment section below on that last one. I know with, I don't want to say my clientele, but I know with my viewers, that one is a little bit more hot button-y or more controversial, at least my opinion of that. So feel free to be nice and gentle down in the comment section below if you agree or disagree on that. I don't want to ramble your guys' ear off because I know this isn't a typical Transfer Tuesday video. I'm not making any money moves today because I've already transferred $3,153 this month towards my federal student loans. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be spending any more money this month. I need to make sure that my paychecks come in, that I can pay my mortgage because that's due in two days. So I don't want my bank account to go too low because it makes an auto withdrawal. Um, I just paid one of my credit cards that covers pretty much all the monthly expenses on it. And I just, I, I want to make it through, get to May, get some paychecks in. And then, yeah, yeah, big stuff coming. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If, if you made it to the end, awesome. Thank you guys. That's actually people getting to the end of my videos is like a huge compliment to me because that means I must not have bored you and put you to sleep. Um, but you must have found what I was saying somewhat entertaining or maybe you just like my dog or something and thought he was going to show up at the end, but he's not going to today. I don't know where he went. Hopefully he's not having an accident on the floor. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much. Take care. I'll see you in the next video.